Today we're talking about the RTX 3000 graphics card launch from NVIDIA. They've just launched their Ampere architecture, and this is going to be a bit of a nerd episode, so if you're not that interested in the internals of a graphics card and how that might work in DaVinci Resolve, this is probably the one to hit the thumbs up button and move on. Give it a shot. First, the marketing speak. Apparently the new 3070, which cost $500, is faster than my 2080 Ti, which costs me about $1,200? And part of that is the law of uh, computers and the way it goes. But another part of that is, whoa, wait a minute. Typically we see, even at the top of the line, about a 30% uptick between generations of graphics cards. But the math that NVIDIA is doing is telling us that it's going to be faster, and in some cases the 3080, for instance, is going to be two times faster than its predecessor. How does that work? Well, they're counting what would typically be called floating point math. Floating point math is a fancy word for decimal point math. And decimal point math is what happens to calculate all of the shade, the color, the shadows, and whatnot inside a graphics card. And it's what makes graphics card much more useful for gaming than the CPU, which in fact is where all this math used to get done. See, the graphics card is just a dedicated unit to do a special type of math that's really helpful for rendering scenes and gaming. The CPU is more of a general process workhorse. It does the general work involved with computing, and mostly integer math and some other special branches and whatnot that goes on there. At any rate, you had this CPU in the back of the day that did everything, and it's been broken out into a GPU for this special floating point type math and other things. Over time, more and more capabilities have been added into the graphics card, such that we now have these CUDA cores, or shaders, as you might call them in other processors. You've got RT cores, these are ray tracing cores introduced by NVIDIA as part of their RTX 2000 series. And you also have these tensor cores, which do predictive modeling and uh, anticipation based on artificial intelligence. They have a very specific structure to them in the way that they group themselves in nodes and process. So which part's two times faster now, John? Well, that's a good question. From a CUDA core perspective, the count in my 2080 Ti, there's 4,352 CUDA cores. Okay. Well, those are individual units which can be grouped by what they call simultaneous multi-threading units. So that would be SMs. And so you get a cluster of SMs that then have inside them groups of CUDA cores. In the Turing architecture, we had, Turing being the 2080 Ti in the 2000 series, we had 64 CUDA cores per SM. Okay, cool. They were floating point math, they did the job, life moved on. So 4,352 in my 2080 Ti, well now there's 5,888 in an RTX, wait for it, 3070. That's right, you step down the chain a couple of cards and you've got 45% more CUDA cores? This is insane. Well it is. But the CUDA core is not what it used to be. You see, previously, the CUDA cores were grouped into sections of 64. And those 64 CUDA cores did floating point math, the decimal point. Now, they were available to each of the SMs, and the SMs grouped them and then took units of work and distributed among the CUDA cores that it governed. Okay, cool, got it. 64 each of the SMs, SMs take the work, they're kind of the overseer, they push it down, and it gets multi-threaded. Well, in the new architecture, Ampere, each SM has 128 CUDA cores. Okay, John, but that means there's less SMs per CUDA. Yeah, you, you got that right. Now, if there's less SMs per CUDA, does that mean that it can take down less work? Well, it depends. It depends on your workload. So if we look at that, we say, okay, we got enough SMs, and we're utilizing our CUDA cores, what do we do with 128 of them? Well, it gets even more complex, you see, because previously we had 64 CUDA cores that could do floating point math. We still do. We have 64 of them. But now we've got an extra 64, and these extra 64 are kind of special. They can do floating point math or integer math. Uh, okay. But what gets interesting about this is all of these CUDA cores need to be doing the same operation at the same time. That's right. Every one of them, every cycle that gets processed, has to do the same exact operation. And if an, any of the individual cores get stuck in a point where they want to fork, do a different operation, they sit out a cycle and wait 
for their turn to come when all of a sudden it's time to do whatever the specific task they want to do is. The point here is, while there is more hardware to work with, while a lot of it is going on, it's really dependent on what your programs do with the CUDA cores as to whether or not the new structure is going to be faster or slower for you. Now, having not been inside the DaVinci Resolve source code, I can't tell you exactly how it uses CUDA cores. I can take a good guess. I can tell you that it's going to use CUDA to calculate all of the color grading that you're doing. It's going to use CUDA to calculate much of the effects that you're using inside your system. Heck, it's even using it to render the little GPU scopes that are down in the corner. So it makes good use of that, and all of that is floating point math. If that's all they're doing inside the CUDA, core, CUDA cores, all of those CUDA cores are going to be doing floating point math, which means 128 per SM are available for faster execution. Likewise, you've got RT cores and those tensor cores. The RT, again, is ray tracing. I haven't seen much utilization in the ray tracing cores from DaVinci Resolve yet. It would be very interesting if DaVinci Resolve 17 were to implement ray tracing as their lighting mechanism. Now, they may do that in places now, but I do think that they're still using three-dimensional shader-style model that calculates the light as it traces through or routes through a 3D model inside Fusion. From an AI perspective in those tensor cores, we already know that DaVinci Resolve is using that in things like superscaling. It's using it in anything that uses the neural engine. The optical flow retime does a really, really good job using these cores. I can see the utilization inside my RTX 2080. Now, what's interesting to me is we don't exactly know what Resolve is going to do. We don't know how they're using CUDA specifically, and therefore we can't predict very well what's going to happen once DaVinci Resolve and the new cards come out. So what do we do? Well, one, we wait for some benchmarks, and I expect that many of the benchmark experts out there are going to be focused on gaming. I keep an eye on Puget Systems. They do a ton of really good work when you start talking about how DaVinci Resolve uses a system. You'll see that they've got experience across all of the platforms, Premiere Pro, Vegas, and a bunch of others, and they've got a lot of experience with hardware. So I'm excited to see what they come out with. That's who I'm really going to be watching. I'm not going to get my hands on a new RTX 3000 series card for some time. So that's going to be what I look to and try and understand exactly how Resolve is using the CUDA cores. If you end up with one of the new cards, I'd love to send you some benchmarks that you can test and tell the world exactly what you found. But in the meantime, let's just be excited. It's fun time to be in technology. These are leaps and bounds in certain use cases above what we got in prior use. Like I said, we typically get about a 30% bump in the top end over the top end card. The way that the specs line out on this one, it could be much, much more. Exciting time to be in hardware. We still have AMD right around the corner with Big Navi, which is going to be their new flagship, which they've dedicated and said is going to argue and fight the top end. For the past few generations, they've been fighting in the middle ground they're going heavyweight, and I can't wait to see what that looks like. If this has been an interesting note for you, let me know. I uh, haven't done many of these, fearing that it would get too technical and not really interesting. If you found this as interesting, please let me know. Happy to do more of this type of content. It's some of the stuff I really enjoy. In the meantime, if it really has been helpful for you, feel free to buy me a coffee below and show me that this is some of the content that you really appreciate. Otherwise, do me a favor, hit subscribe and like below, and... Have a great day.